Earlier this summer, Amazon reached out to me and asked if I could do a video showing off their Echo Show 5. So this video is paid for by Amazon. Now, as you guys know, I just moved into a new apartment and I've actually found some pretty good use cases for the Alexa. Things like, Alexa, wake me up tomorrow at 6.30 a.m. Alarm set for 6.30 a.m. tomorrow. Alexa, how many grams of sugar are in a cup? There are 200 grams in one cup of sugar. Alexa, how do you say tired in French? Tired in French is... Fatigué. Alexa, text my dog that I miss him. Sorry, I don't know that, but I do have a skill you might like. It's called Bark Like a Dog. Wanna try it? Yeah. Okay, here's Bark Like a Dog. Okay. Here are some of the dogs visiting my kennel today. This is Rocco, a Chihuahua, visiting from Windsor, Ontario, Canada. It's like the real thing. I've been having a lot of fun exploring various skills that people have built for Alexa, but there was one skill that I found that was missing, and that was a Pomodoro skill. So if you know me, you'll know that I use the Pomodoro method to work and study. In a nutshell, it's a timer that you set up where you have 25 minutes of work and then five minutes of rest, and you repeat that until all of your work is done. And I find that it's what makes me most productive. When I found that no one had built a Pomodoro skill for Alexa that would work with an Echo Show 5 or any screen-enabled Alexa device in that it would have a countdown going so you could see where you're at with a glance, I took it as an opportunity to build one myself. And that's exactly what I did. And in this video, I'm going to be showing you how I did that. Starting from scratch, going to, actually, I have it open right now. So this is, this is the final product. This is what we, we got to. Alexa, start a Pomodoro. So that's it. That's, it's super simple. It literally just has a countdown timer on it. I can see at a glance where I'm at. It'll give me a little ding, as you heard, when I start either a work or a rest cycle. That's it. It's perfect. It's super simple, and I'm going to show you how I built it. Currently like 10.30, 10.45 at night. Uh, my brother's coming to visit me today, so he's going to be in at about an hour and a half, two hours. So I've got a little bit of time to start playing with this. Whoa, it knows who I am. Updating this device. All right, so our Alexa is updating. Uh, so I think it's a good moment to look into the actual development process. Uh, so let's do that now. So the first thing that I did when I was looking was literally just Google how to develop for Alexa. And I, I found the developer console and made a profile and then just created a skill. It was all really easy. So I just named my skill here Pomodoro, like the most basic thing. And then I, I chose Alexa hosting, which means that it's just going to be hosted in the cloud for me on AWS for free which is pretty cool. So it set itself up and then I just went in and created an invocation name, which is what you say when you're saying, you know, Alexa open blank. I wasn't sure what an intent was, but I figured out that it was actually just like a little action that you're doing. So any action that you want, if you're saying Alexa, you know, pause or Alexa play or anything like that. So I figured I'd just do a start Pomodoro and that brought me into the code. So inside the code here, you can see that it started me off with a little bit of a Hello World program. And the first thing that I really do when I'm learning anything new, any new library, even though I already know Node, which is what this is written in, it's written in JavaScript with Node, um, is literally you could just copy what other people are doing already. And that's what I'm doing here. So I'm just modifying the Hello World program here to say things that I expect it to say. So you can see here I'm in the simulator saying start a Pomodoro and I'm getting the different responses that I put out, which is really great. So then my next step was, okay, how do I get things on the screen? So then I enabled the display and I started to just copy things from uh, a GitHub that, that had text showing up and I got, you know, you can see there a string test, which is amazing. So now I have things on the screen, but I want to make them more fancy. So then I realized there's a, there's a library or a language called Alexa presentation language that allows you to do a lot more rich editing a lot more rich visuals, dynamic content, if you will. So here I'm just, you know, reading through the documentation, trying to pick it up, going off of a, a GitHub example that was published by some Alexa developers, and I'm trying to get some APL stuff working. Now, APL has this beautiful little editor that you can do where you can set up your layout and then just copy the code over. So that's what I did there. 
uh, and you can see I'm just modifying a few little things in there and it shows up in the simulator, which is amazing. So now the next step really for me is to get commands working and commands are what make the content dynamic. So for dynamic content, what I mean by that is changing the text. So here it's hopefully gonna change the text from 25 to test and that's exactly what happens. And it took me a while to get there. Now what I'm doing is I'm doing a sequential command, which is essentially multiple commands looping in a row. So you can see here, it's just a pending test to the end every time, once a second, which is great. But obviously it's not quite what we want yet. We wanna have something that is counting down. And so what I ended up doing was I ended up running two sequential commands in parallel, one to update the minutes and one to update the seconds. And I couldn't just do one sequential command because there's a limit of around 120 commands that you can run. Uh, and that would be 1500 commands if I wanted to do 25 minutes with one command for every second. So you can see here, it is counting down the minutes and the seconds and it is all working. So we have a timer and it's looking pretty good. So I'm just cleaning up some code, making it look a little prettier here. Now it says work, then there's a rest. And then I submit it to the store and I'm pretty much done at this point. Like I'm making the, the icon, I'm making it just look really cool because I'm a super great artist as you can tell. Uh, it's a tomato because I believe Pomodoro is tomato in Italian. Don't quote me on that, but uh, that's why all of these Pomodoro apps are like tomato timer or whatever. So, you know, I'm going through submitting, validating. Things are showing up now, so ready? Alexa, open Pomodoro. Starting Pomodoro. So it's great, it opens up, it's this cool little clock thing. Um, it just doesn't count down yet, but it will. Maybe. All right, so basically I realized that I messed up. And the reason being is that Alexa skills can only stay open if the user is interacting with them. Otherwise they close within about 30 seconds. And because a timer does not have interaction, constant vocal interaction, then it just closes after 30 seconds. So it actually didn't matter that it wasn't counting down because even if it was counting down, it would close after about 30 seconds. But luckily there's a workaround. What I'm thinking right now is the best bet. I don't really like it that much, but I think the best bet is to make a 25 minute long video that has a countdown timer on it. That way I can look at a glance and see what's going on as well as speak to it. Um, but I'm literally gonna do that right now. I'm gonna go into Final Cut and I'm gonna make a 25 minute countdown video and then I'm gonna play it. It's essentially just going to be a glorified video player at this point. So. I'm gonna give that a shot. So I put together a bunch of titles in Final Cut to count down from 25 to 24, not very fancy, probably a better way to do it. Made a pause button, and then I uploaded everything to S3, which is the storage that Amazon has on AWS. And then I was able to link it all together and get it running. Alexa, start a Pomodoro. Starting. And there you go. With no interaction or anything, uh, it's open for more than 30 seconds. So obviously it's a little bit ugly right now with the whole like black box within black box. I can fix that, no problem. Um, but check it out, <laughs> I'm pretty pleased. So then it was just a matter of taking it from 25 to 24 and going from 25 all the way down to zero. So really just kind of a repetitive process of cutting and pasting. There must be a better way to do it, but honestly it took about 10 minutes, so I'm not too fussed. And then I just linked it all together, uploaded everything to S3 once more. And then I realized I needed a play pause button so I could toggle. So then I just changed the pause button into a play pause button. Uh, you know, again, nothing very fancy, all just pulling it together in Photoshop in a couple of minutes, uploading to AWS, linking everything together. And then I created a touch wrapper so that I could actually hit the button and then made some play pause functionality within the, uh, the code. Alexa, start Pomodoro. Starting. So it looks a lot better than it did before. Doesn't have that weird background. I'm actually pretty happy with this though. This is exactly what I was picturing because um, it's literally just a Pomodoro clock. It's perfect. I think that this is a really interesting project to share because it shows you how programming can really be sometimes. How it is the most frustrating thing in the world when you build something and it just doesn't work and you have to start over. But at the same time, the most rewarding thing in the world when the thing that you built is something that you've wanted to have literally for years. 
as in my case with this project. So again, I'd like to give a massive thanks to Amazon for paying for this video. It was super fun to play with this Echo Show 5 and to build an Alexa skill. And if you wanna try building an Alexa skill, I highly recommend doing it. It's not hard to do on your own. You can find the code for this project in the description of this video. I'm including a link uh, so that you can copy it play with it, change it, modify it however you want. So I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope you got something out of it. Feel free to leave a comment, a like, a dislike. And uh, as always, I'm John Fish. Thanks for watching. Subscribe if you want to, and I'll see you next time.